We talked about base 10 and a couple other bases so far, but I want to go into further depth with that. We're going to use something called base 10 blocks to model what we mean by these place values that are base 10. So we have a few different blocks to look at. We have something called a unit that's a single cube to represent singles, kind of like how $1 bills work in our monetary system. Then we have a long. Notice that the long is made up of 10 units stacked side by side, kind of like how a $10 bill works. Then we have a flat. A flat is made up of longs. We need 10 longs to make a flat, similar to how we could use 10 $10 bills to make a $100 bill. And then lastly, we have a block. A block is made up of 10 flats. So if you count the squares that go to the depth of this block, we can see that there are 10. A base 10 system says when you have 10 units, we don't say 10 units, we call it a single long. And if you have 10 longs, you don't say you have 10 longs, you say you have a flat. If you have 10 flats, instead of saying 10 flats, you say a block. It's almost like exchanging your money so that you can have the fewest number of bills possible. So to elaborate on that, let's look at this example. What's the fewest number of pieces that we can receive in a fair exchange? If we start with 11 flats, 17 longs, and 16 units. If you wanted to, you could look at this in terms of money, like you have $1,100 bills, 17 $10 bills, and 16 $1 bills. Now I want to use the blocks because it's going to translate for us later when we're looking at things that don't work the way that our money does, but if that helps bridge a gap for you, then think of it in terms of money. So if we have 11 flats, and we have 11 of these, and we know that 10 flats is enough to make a block. So rather than say 11 flats, let's look at a 10 flat and one single flat, so that we can replace the 10 flats with a block. So we've split our flats so that we can make one block and we would have one flat left over. We're going to do the same thing looking at the longs. If we have 17 longs, well, 10 of those can turn into a flat, but we would have 7 longs left over. So if we start off with 17 longs, we can replace that with one flat and seven longs. We just exchanged 10 of our flats, sorry, 10 of our longs to become a flat. And then we need to look at our units. We have 16 units, which we could replace with one long, and that would leave six units behind. So then looking at everything that we've exchanged, we took our one flat and split it into a block and a flat. We took our 17 longs, turned that into one flat and seven longs. And then our 16 units turned into one long, six units. And then we want to combine those together. Notice that I have a couple flats that I can combine and I have a couple of longs that I can combine. And if those were enough to make a new grouping, I would do that. So let's copy that over. We have one block, two flats, eight longs, and six units. So the fair exchange for 11 flats, 17 longs, 16 units, is one block, two flats, eight longs, six units. And remember, our goal is to have the fewest number of pieces possible. We went from having 
44 pieces to now having 17 pieces. So we've greatly reduced the number of pieces by doing this fair exchange. Let's use these same blocks to help represent a number in base 5. Now base 5 numerals are useful and probably more useful than we recognize, but let's just work on understanding the base 5 system. Rather than talking about a unit along a flat and a block, which you totally could, you could still call this a unit, you can still call this a long, still call this a flat, you can still call this a block. Because we have typically five fingers on one hand, we say that a unit is like a finger, a long is like a hand, because once you have five fingers, you have a full hand. Now, if you have five hands, we don't have a special name for that, so that's where we would switch back to just saying flat and block. But in base five, we can use our hands to help us group numbers, so that's kind of convenient. If we want to represent a number in base 5, similar to how we looked at numbers represented in base 60 and base 20, we can write the numeral using our digits, and then we would just signal to the reader that we're in base 5 by using the word 5 as a subscript. So just to be clear, this is not a base 10 number. So if I leave that little word 5 off at the end, then I'm talking about a completely different number. When we don't put a word at the bottom subscript, it's implied that we're in base 10. If you want to write 10 as a subscript, that's fine. That's just extra thorough. If we want to convert this number that's written in base 5 into base 10, what we need to do is rewrite this in expanded form using the five place values. So we start with our five to the zero. We need a multiplier there for our digit. And five to the first, place for our digit there. Five squared. Let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six place values that we need. All right, we have all six of our place values. Now we need to just copy our digits into each of those place values. Unlike the other examples we did in the last video, we're just going to copy these digits in. So we have four, four, two, two, one, one. And then from here, we'll type that into our calculator. That's into our calculators, I get 4,074. So what I was saying down here is if you leave the subscript off, you're actually representing a base 10 numeral, but the real number in base 10 is 4,074. Now switching between bases can feel a little bit cumbersome. It's worth taking your practice so that you can get more familiar with it. Notice that the name base 5 tells you that our place values are powers of 5. Now you don't have to worry about translating between pictures and digits. We are going to use the same digits that we've used before. But something to think about is that in base 5, the digit 5 doesn't exist. Because if I have 5 fingers, I'm not going to call them fingers. I would call it a single hand. So in base 5, the only digits that we get to use are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. There are 5 digits, but 5 is not one of those digits. I don't get to use 5. And remember, that's because if I have enough to make a group in base 5, then I need to move up to the next place value. The same reason why in base 10, we don't have 10 as a single digit. We have 0 and 1. Those two digits together can make up the number 10, but we're using the 10 place value to be able to represent that. If we wanted to count in base 5, we could start with the counting numbers. So 1, the same number that we use in base 10, is 1 in base 5. 
Same with two, three, and four. I could write five down here if I want to, but because it's literally the same as a base 10 numeral, I don't need the subscript on one, two, three, four. But then as soon as I get to our base 10 numbers, like the number five, in base five, I will not write it that way. I will write it as one, zero, base five. We're not gonna say 10, we're gonna say one, zero. And the reason for that is because that literally means one times five to the first power plus zero times five to the zero power. And if we were to think about this in base 10, we would have literally five units, but in base five, we're saying that we have zero units or zero fingers. And then the one tells us that we have one hand or one long. So we're using our place value here. All right, let's keep counting so that we can be more familiar with our base five number system. The number six in base 10 would look like one, one. We have one hand and one finger, or one long and one unit. The number seven would look like one, two, one long, one unit. The number eight would look like one, three. The number nine would look like one, four. The number 10 would not be one five. Remember, we're not allowed to use the digit five. A 10 would be the same thing as having two hands or having two longs. So that would look like two zero. Now remember, we're not calling this 20. We're not saying 14. We're not saying 13. Those are all base 10 numbers. We will read them off using the digits two zero base five. 2, 0 in base 5 is equivalent to 10, which is why we won't say 20 or 10 when we're talking about base 5 numbers. We're just going to read the digits and then say what base we're working in. Now let's look at the binary system. This is something that computers are heavily reliant on for programming. Um, it's a base 2 system, and if you blink, you'll miss how the regrouping works. So the same way that we can create base 10 blocks or base five blocks, now let's look at the binary system. In other words, the base two system. Our counting blocks have a unit. If I have two units, I turn it into a long. If I have two longs, I turn it into a flat. And if I have two flats, I turn that into a block. These groupings happen very quick. And one of the reasons for that is that we're only having two digits. We can use the digits zero and one. We have a total of two digits in base two, but keep in mind the number two, the digit two is not usable in base two. And that's because as soon as we have two of something, we regroup it to the next place value. Let's start by counting in base two. And we're going to compare that to base 10. So in base 10, we have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. In base 2, the number 1 is the same, but the number 2 would look like we have two units. And if we have two units, then we would call that a long. That's using the second place value, so that would look like 1, 0. If I have one long and I add a unit to that, in base 10 we'd call that three, but one long with one unit in base two looks like the number one one base two. Now it's literally equal to the number three in base 10, but it looks very different. If I have one long and I add one unit and I add another unit to that, I cannot write 1, 2, because the digit 2 is off limits. So let's think about if we have two longs, sorry, one long and two units. Well, if I have two units, 
that's enough to make a long. But I already have a long. So if I turn my two units into a long and I have two longs, that's enough to make a flat. So if I have one long and one unit, and I add another unit to that, it causes a double down regrouping so that I now have one flat. So writing the number 100, zero, zero, base 2, is the same thing as one flat, zero longs, zero units. One flat in base 2 is the same as the number 4 in base 10. Now notice in base 10, we're still in the units place value, 1 through 8. But in base 2, we've gone through the units place value, the long place value. Now we're in the flats place value. It changes rapid fast. So looking at the number 100, zero, zero, base 2, if I increase that by one unit, then I would no longer have a 0 in the units place. I would have a 1. That's equivalent to the number 5 in base 10. If I increase that by 1, then I would have 2 units, which is enough to have a single flat. So increasing 101, base 2, by 1 unit turns it into the number 110, which is equivalent to base 6, not base 6, equivalent to 6 in base 10. If I increase 110 in base 2 by another unit, that becomes 111, which is equivalent to 7 in base 10. If I add another unit to this number, 111, well then I would have two units, which is enough to make a long, but then I would have two longs, which is enough to make a single additional flat. But I already have a flat, so I would have two flats, which would mean I have enough to make a block. So I would write 1, 0, 0, 0, base 2, which is equivalent to 8 in base 10. That says I have one flat, sorry, one block, zero flats, zero longs, zero units. And then we could continue this. And if you look at the column of base 2 numbers, notice that all of these numbers include only zeros and ones, but in different positions. Whereas in base 10, we have far more digits to use. Now, if we wanted to take a number in base 2 and convert it to base 10, we can do that simply by writing the number out in expanded form using the base 2 place values. So we're going to take this number and we're going to write it out using the powers of 2 for our place values. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 digits, which means that we're going to have up to 2 to the 4th power for place values. So the 1 that appears farthest to the left is multiplied by 2 to the 4th power, and then we're going to work our way down. The next digit is 0, that's multiplied by 2 to the 3rd power. After that, we have another 1, times 2 squared, 1 times 2, and then 1 times 2 to the 0. And we can multiply this out in our calculator, or if we want, we can do it in our head. 2 to the 4th is 16. 0 times anything is 0. 2 squared is 4. 1 times 2 is 2. And then we have 1 at the end. So we can add these. 16 and 4 is 20 plus 3, we have 23. So the base 2 number, 10111, base 2, is equivalent to 23 and base 10. If we are taking a number that is written in some other base system, all we have to do is write it in expanded form using the appropriate base for each place value and then multiply it out. Converting in the other direction, that takes a little more work.